Hello there, my name is Jonathan and this is Jonathan's Days. This is a knitting podcast that I host all the way from London. If you're new, welcome. And if you have been here for a while, welcome back. If you have just jumped on board from last week's, last week's video, last video, which was my wrap up of 2023, welcome aboard. You have joined at a very nice time and I have lots to update you on and lots that I've been thinking about since that wrap up video. It was a great food for thought video. So it was very, very, uh, I would say productive for me to make that video. So I have some thoughts about how the rest of the year is going to look. And I'm also really, really excited and enthused about my knitting at the moment and just working away on lots of different things and really, really enjoying myself with what I've been making. So uh, let's uh, dive in to what I've been getting up to. I have just two finished object objects this time. They're qu quite smaller accessories, but I want to share them. And then we've got lots of really interesting whips and I've also picked up some old whips and we'll talk about those later on. But let's dive into the first finished object. The first finished object are my geometer mittens, which I finally got finished recently. Let me get my face out of the, the frame. And this is the other one. So yeah, so these are Oh, the name of the designer is on the screen. I can't believe their name is escaping me right now, but it is on the screen. These are the Geometer Mittens. They're, I've knit mine out of Retrosaria Rosa Pomar's Mondim yarn as the main color. So that's the brown. And then the uh, contrast color is Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wood in the, dyed in the, wood, dyed in the Wool. Uh, in the color Holy Toledo, which they launched at New York Sheep and Wool Festival last October, and that's where I picked up the skein. So I'm really happy and excited to have um, kind of like my my Rhinebeck New York Sheep and Wool Festival mittens, memory mittens. You know, it's one of those skeins that I picked up traveling, so it's been quite fun to have them finished. I'm really, really happy with them. You can see how the color change for, for this skein goes from this over to here. So they kind of meet at that point. So you can see, I will say with when the, the, like the colors changed a lot on this one and not a lot on this one. So the, the change is a bit, um, it's like an interesting one. And for the thumbs, I did try and get them to match their the main color as much as I could. Um, so I think I pulled from the inside to finish this um, thumb. The, yeah, so they're like kind of like mismatched in a way, which I don't really mind. I, I enjoyed it. I made the larger size. There's two sizes. I made the larger size and they are just about like just about fit me. You can probably tell it might be a little bit short on my palm. So if the actual main pattern had been a little bit taller for me, it would have worked, but, but it's, you know, it's no big deal. It's absolutely fine. Like my, my middle fingers are right at the points. Um, the pattern was super simple, super easy to follow. Um, you know, all these all over color work mittens. This is the second pair of these that I've, uh, not of this pattern, but of color work mittens that I've made. And, uh, ooh, I actually have the first ones right here. Here's the first ones I ever made. This was my first color work project, actually. This is, oh, I can't think of the name, but it's a skein deer knits pattern. And so it's fun to see the, the progression in my color work journey. This is like DK weight, and this is like fingering weight. So these were made on 2.75 millimeter needles. So it was interesting to see the kind of progression. I think I made these, must be two or three years ago now. Um, made out of Brooklyn Tweed um, Arbor, I believe. Um, so I still wear these, they're great. They're like super, super warm, but I'm really, really happy with this new pair. It definitely feels like an evolution of my knitting skills and all that. Um, they're so warm. We had some very, very cold, like we had a week or two of like quite cold weather here in London. So I was wearing these and let me tell you, I, I walked to work, it's about half an hour, 40 minute walk and um, my hands were sweating. I would, I nearly had to take them off um, towards the end of the the walk just because they were so warm. And that's the nice thing about you know a color work, most color work, anything really, is that 
you've got all the floats in the back of your knitting, which kind of makes a double layer of knitting, which makes them extra warm. So I think if I went somewhere really, really cold, I could even get liners like for these. But either way, they're, they're super, super warm, super fun. I love the colors. Uh, I knew exactly what, you know, main color I wanted to, what main color and spin cycle color I wanted to use as soon as I saw this pattern. It's a relatively new pattern. It's only a few months old. Um, so yeah, super, super happy with them. Love them, can't recommend them enough. Um, yes, I did the color work on the thumb. I think I mentioned the last time I showed these. The color work on the thumb was in Magic Loop. I used a small circumference needle for the, the main glove, part of the glove. And um, Magic Loop color work is a bit fiddly, but I did get through it. I did do it for the thumbs, which was fine. It's not perfect tension, but I'm still pretty happy with it. Uh, I won't be rushing to do any larger projects with um, Magic Loop method. I do prefer a um, small circumference needle. Um, I use, oh, for these I actually got Chowgu needles for the first time. And I quite, 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 quite enjoyed them. And yeah, normally I use Addies. They're just kind of the, the brand I've ended up using for small circumference. But for some reason, why did I end up getting them? I don't know why. I liked how sharp the Chowgus were for color work, which is quite important for me. And I did like the cable for the Chowgus. So maybe I'll, depending on the project, I might end up getting more of them. I got the interchangeable tip ones. So we'll see if my um, collection grows. I don't, I tend to buy needles. I have interchangeable, I kind of buy them as I need them. I don't buy like a full set. I don't feel like, I mean, I think when you're beginning, maybe you can, but I've built it up kind of bit by bit, project by project. But yeah, so that's the Geometer mittens. Absolutely love them, really happy with them. I think it might get cold here again in London pretty soon, so I'll be able to wear them a bit more. So happy with those, highly recommend the pattern. And I think there's a whole collection of geometer patterns. So if you do like that kind of geometric color work patterning on the outer of the glove, um, the designer has a whole collection of those. So definitely recommend. And then my other finished object is another one I've shown. This one, uh, it was important for me to get this finished because I cast this on in September and that's kind of a theme that I want to carry on. Um, so this is finished. I'll hold it up. So what is this? This is hard to describe. This is essentially the field shawl by Max the Knitter. So I followed more or less the pattern um, of increases, decreases. Basically, I followed that pattern, but I used 3.5 millimeter needles, and then I used a fingering weight yarn held with a mohair. Um, and the color, so the, the yarns are All You Need Is Love. It will be on the screen, All You Need Is Love, which is a yarn, a skein of yarn that I bought from All You Need Is Love, which is a yarn store in Barcelona. And I paired it with some Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the color Dusty Olive, I believe the colorway is for the mohair. I can't remember the colorway for the, um, the fingering weight yarn, but it will have been on the screen already. But it is a very nice, they paired well quite together. It's kind of like a camo tonal color. And so the reason I cast this on is because I bought that skein in Barcelona in 2022, maybe 2021. Were we even traveling in 2021? It must've been 2022. And so then when I was going back last year, I was like, oh, I've had this skein in my stash and I'm going back to Barcelona. So I'm like, I need to cast it on. Um, so if you've been watching for a little while, you, you'll have seen this before. And so I really like wanted to use that skein. I cast it on and I haven't been finishing, finishing it. It traveled with me to New York and I didn't finish it. And then recently I was like, okay, this needs to get polished off. And so how I did it is I took that skein, it was like a hundred grand skein and I wound it up into a 50 gram ball and a 50 gram ball. And I literally like start, you start at one end, cast on, I increased. The original field shawl pattern has stripes in it, but I didn't do those. So I increased till I got to the, the center point and then, and like I ran out of yarn and then I decreased back down and used the second ball. So I split it into two, started with one ball, knit till that ran out, 
increasing and then picked up the second ball and decreased back down. Now my calculations must have been wrong and I don't know if you'll be able to tell and I don't know how I'll be able to show you but I did run out and so I did have to substitute from about here. It might be hard to see. Um, you really can't tell that well. I had to substitute in a little bit. I had a little leftover bit of some Olin sock yarn, which I had made a pair of socks out of. And it is pretty much like held together with the mohair has, has kind of like disguised it even more. So you can't really tell that just the tip here of these two wings of the shawl are different. Um, and now I'm going to pause for a second and I'm actually going to put it on because it's going to bang the mic and I've learned not to bang the mic and annoy you with that. So I'm going to put it on and show you how I've been wearing it and I'll have to like adjust the mic. So give me one second and I'll do that. Okay, so this is how I've been wearing it. I've been wearing it kind of like a little, to me it feels like it's like a scout uniform, like a Girl Scout, Boy Scout uniform. I put the point at the back and I bring it around and then I hold it here. And this is also where I'm holding the mic. And so I've got this um, cuff here from Heidenhammer, who I love their bags. I have literally, I have five of Heidenhammer Hammer's bags lined up next to me, but um, they, I've bought tons of these cuffs. I must have four or five of them in different colors. And they're similar to kind of what go on the, um, the bags. But these cuffs I use really often for shawls. Sorry if I'm bopping the mic. Um, so when I'm wearing like a triangular shawl, I'll wrap the shawl around me and have it all in front. And then I'll clip the, this um, cuff. Uh, it's just got a snap on it. And I wrap that around the shawl and then that holds the shawl on my neck. And I absolutely love it. And then I, when I made this kind of little shawl and I tied this in front, I was like perfect for these little... Uh, shawl cuffs um, and when I'm not wearing them I wear them on my wrist they're beautiful and they've got you know it's stamped with the Hyden Hammer logo I just really love how it looks and so I've been wearing it like this and I, I really really have been enjoying it a lot like so much so that I'm like diving into my stash to be like okay where's another one of those really nice um, single skeins of like fingering weight which we all I don't know about you guys but I always tend to like pick those up and uh, use one of those to like make one of these little shawls I, I wear cowls an awful lot and my big shawls i tend to wear at home but this was a really nice way to have a smaller shawl and yeah i'm just really happy with it i think i am going to go stash diving and make another one this year i'm not in a rush to do it but i really love how this looks i love like this style i'm really happy with it so i'm going to wear it for the rest of the video hopefully the microphone is working well he's going to double check yeah it's working well so yeah i hope you like how this looks i i haven't really i haven't seen many people do it like this so i like this kind of like shawlette bandana style i know people have made the sophie's scarf the sophie shawl by petite knit which is similar and um people kind of tie it in a in a knot at the front which is quite nice but i quite like this way of doing it with the ends hanging down so i hope you like that because i'm i'm pretty pretty happy with that and so yeah so this is Call, I would call it technically the field shawl. So if you did want to do this with the single skein, you can do what I did. And I just use the rate of increasing and decreasing from the field shawl by Max the Knitter. So that's how I did it for this. So yeah, those are my two finished objects. And now let's dive into whips because I have quite a few that I want to talk about. So on to works in progress. Now, the first work in progress I'm going to talk about is my latest sweater jumper that I've been working on, which I showed in the previous episode or not the previous episode, the previous normal podcast episode. And it was my kind of end of year one, and this was my Christmas cast on. Now I've gotten a bit of progress completed in it, but doing the year wrap up video made me realize that sometimes I race through projects because I want them to be finished for this, for social media, for content, to make videos, to share with people, or I'm racing through them to kind of get done for an event or something. And that's something I don't want to do anymore in 2024. And I was about to like push myself to finish this project in time for this video. And I've kind of tried to take that pressure off myself and just go at my leisure, go at what a regular speed is for me, enjoy the actual process of making it. And this project is knit on 3.2. 
two five millimeter needles, so even smaller needles, um, than either of the two previous finished objects. So it's uh, like a lot of work and I just need to learn to like take my time with it. So I am taking my time with it. I have made a, a decent amount of projects and I have things to say about it. So here it is. This is my nightfall sweater by Maxim Sear, Max the Knitter. This is in the latest published issue of Liner Magazine, which I believe is 19. And this was my Christmas cast on. So I cast this on on Christmas day. And it has been a joy to knit. I'm so in love with it. I'm in love with the colors. I think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever made. Uh, it's definitely challenging me. It's taking longer than I thought it would. It's, you know, what, what date are we now? It's over a month. I'm used to finishing sweaters maybe in three weeks, three and a half weeks. Um, having something that I, I foresee will take me a good six to eight weeks to complete is quite a long time for me with the speed I knit. But I have to keep telling myself, this is 3.25 millimeter needles. Th these are small needles. This is fingering weight yarn, small gauge, color work. You know, all of these reasons are reasons why this project is not just a DK weight stockinette sweater. You know, this is going to take me some time and I need to accept that. And it's the, sometimes when you look on social media and you see people knitting so many things so quickly, you're like, hold on a minute, that's okay. If I was making something simpler in bigger yarn, I could be faster, but I'm not. I'm taking my time enjoying this project that I really, I keep thinking of it like heirloom. Like this is just so epic it's one of the most amazing things i've ever made and i'm so proud of it even at this stage so i'm taking my time i'm enjoying it so apologies if this is boring that you've seen this already but i do have new thoughts about it as i'm going so i'm going to move a bit to the side so you can see it so this is knit up in legason hand dyed in their british fingering weight base british fingering base and the colors from the top, so this is Jonathan Soft Day, which is my colorway from Le Garçon. The black is Moira's Black Rose. Then there's Cher, oh, nope, uh, Meredith's Gray is the gray. And then the pink, which you'll see mostly here, is Kirby's Pink, I believe. So let me hold this up a little bit so you can see. So we've got the yoke completed, a little bit of the body, which is standard for me. I tend to complete a bit of the body. And then, um, so the color work extends beyond the split of the arms and the color work goes on a bit more. So I did that color work. And then I tend to keep knitting until I run out of the whatever ball of yarn I'm using. And then when that ball finishes, I go onto the sleeves. So currently I finished one sleeve. So again, the color work extends beyond um, the split so you've got this section of color work which is the same on the body and then there's a tiny bit more on the sleeve and then the sleeve itself and so there are short rows in the back which you'll be able to see there and this is here I as I said I love this I'm so happy with this I can't wait to wear it it's going to be amazing stunning I, I, I love it so much it has been quite challenging for a lot of reasons Firstly was that way of me having to let go and be like, take your time with the project, just enjoy it, no need to rush. And um, the other thing is, and so this is currently just in Liner Magazine. And those of you who have it and those of you who want to knit it, I do want you to take note that, so it is meant to be only two colors per row, but in one of the charts, the main chart in the magazine, two of the rows are three color. And then in the other chart, which has a similar motif, they're two color. So when I was knitting, um, it's here actually, where this part here, oh, here. So that part should be where the pink blips are in the middle. That part should be two color color work but the chart in the magazine has it as three color. So I did it as three color. And then here where it's mirrored on the sleeve and the body, it's as two color, but I wanted it to match. So I did this section here and this section here as three color. It's only in total eight rounds. So it's not that many rounds of knitting. It's only eight rounds of knitting. So it wasn't too bad. I, I have done three color color work before. It's not outside of my skill set. Is it easy? No, 
it's kind of a bit fiddly with my fingers. I tend to do the two colors. So when I knit color work, I have one strand in my right hand and one strand in my left. So I do English style, continental, throwing and picking at the same time. And so when I do three colors, I put two strands in my left on the continental side and I pick from both sides. So that's fine when I'm using normal needles, but when I come here to the sleeve to do uh, my small circumference, which I was just speaking at, I use a, a small circumference needle, not ma magic loop. It was extremely difficult to do three color knitting, three color color work knitting, because I hold the needle slightly differently when it's like a needle that's literally this big. Um, kind of just the way my hand sits and way, the way I anchor it is completely different. So it was super challenging to do this section of the sleeve. And you probably, maybe you'll be able to see, you can see my tension is so tight because I was so tight the whole time doing it. Um, hopefully it will block out a bit. You can see here the tension has been a bit tight in my color work in general where I'm catching. Um, if I did the whole thing over again, maybe I would do it slightly differently. Blocking is magical. I'm sure it will, you know, soften things up. The, the strands will relax. I can do a bit of padding and, and pulling and stretching and prodding and make sure it has a really good soak and maybe a little bit warm water to, you know, combat all those things. But otherwise, you know, only, only an extremely rude knitter would notice and say to someone who had knit something by hand, like, oh, I've noticed your tension is off. I don't think anyone would ever say that about someone's color work tension. Like we all know what it's like. We all know it's challenging. It could be someone's first project uh, doing color work. Like nobody would ever say that, you know, we tend to just notice it ourselves. So I'm not kind of getting hung up, up, up about it. I'm actually just so freaking proud of this. Sorry, this is the back. So freaking proud of this and how it looks. So I'm really, really happy with it so far. I'm currently, so before, ooh, don't want to drop stitches. Sorry, we all know what it's like. So let me just pull these through. I have literally, before I started filming, I was like, before I film, I just need to finish those last two, three color rows. So I finished those rows. So they're literally just done here. You can see my needles are still on the sleeve. And so once I get through that, um, section of color work on the sleeve I will be a much happier man and it will be a lot more smooth sailing to finish off the sleeve is super enjoyable there's some decreases down the sleeve and then just this last little bit of color work which is fun and easy color work to do even on a small circumference there you go so really enjoying that just some close-ups I mean the next time you see this in the next video I'll be wearing it so you know it's nice to show you now um Really, really happy with it. Uh, another thing that I, another challenge I have encountered, which is also, which has slowed down my ability to work on this. And also to note guys, slows me down making these videos is daylight. We don't have a lot of daylight going on right now and slowly but surely spring is coming, but there's not a lot of daylight. So it's difficult for me to film. And it's also difficult for me to see the colors on this swamp, swamper, jumper, sweater. If you'll notice, there isn't a huge contrast. It probably shows up much better on the video, but particularly here, you'll see there's this gray, and then which is Meredith's gray, and then Jonathan's soft day, which is the green. The contrast between them is extremely low. If you took a picture of this and turned it black and white, all this section would vanish because it's all the, they, they're so low contrast between each other. So if I was to make this over again, would I have chosen maybe a lighter gray would have worked or a different color than the gray? Obviously I, wasn't, I had to put in my color, but would I choose a different color? Yes, most likely I would have. So there would have been a little, little bit more of a contrast. I don't mind low contrast color work actually. It doesn't bother me. And I'm so happy with this. Like I'm, I'm so thrilled with it. What it has done is that there are sections where I'm knitting with just these two colors, which are so alike in color value there is so such little contrast it's so difficult to see it in not natural light like strong natural light right now the camera is doing a lot of work, good work here because it's quite gray outside and so if i was i was working on this just before i was filming 
and it was still extremely difficult to see those the difference between those two colors which just makes me like strain do you know I've, i'm furrowing my brow i'm concentrating so hard my head's hurting and then what else am i doing i'm tightening up because i can't see properly the, the difference between these two colors when i'm doing the color work so that's been like a big challenge here you can see once i get down to the black section the black and gray it's fine but this section here is just extremely difficult there are points where it's just a lot of one color and a single of the gray and so i'm going through and i have to like concentrate so hard just to spot that gray color to knit, knit it so that's been another reason why i've had to slow down because i i haven't been able to work on it in the I haven't been able to work on it in the evenings when I'm on certain sections. I just have to wait for a time when I've got some natural daylight to work on it. And when do I have natural time in the daylight to work on it is the weekend. Because when I go, when I leave for work, it's dark. When I get home from work, it's dark. So it's actually been a reason why I've had to slow down on this project too. Thankfully, I have mm, like 10 more rows of this challenging color work, which I'll probably do tomorrow on Sunday. And um, yeah, so then I will get through that and then it will be, the, I just know it'll be just a downward slide down the hill just to finish off the sleeve and then zip through the body and then I'll finally have a finished sweater, which will be my first of the year, which is super exciting. And I will be wearing it at Unravel Festival, which is a fiber yarn wool knitting crocheting festival here in London in a place called Farnham. This will be my third year going. If you watch the roundup, video you'll know that I rushed to make the sweater that I made last year which was a nice sweater wasn't my the highest ranked in my ranking system but I'm so happy with this sweater and it's another reason I'm like slow down enjoy this make sure it's done well and you're happy with it so that when you wear it to the festival you will be proud and it's something you'll continue on to wear so that's what I'm planning on wearing um, when this is released it'll be like two weeks of the festival so the next episode after this will be after the festival, so I'll be able to fill you in on all the, on all on how all that went. And I do believe Max and Vincent are going, so I'll get to um, show this to Max and get a photo with Max, which will be super fun. Um, so yes, so part of the nightfall, highly recommend it. It's such a great pattern, such an epic piece. So if you are thinking about it, just go for it. The gauge is small. The yarn, I can't stop thinking about this yarn. It is epic. I love this yarn so much. I'm probably going to get, I think, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure they're going to be out and revel with their yarn. They got to bring their yarn. Guys, are you bringing your yarn? Please bring your yarn. I'm going to buy more yarn from them for sure. So um, yeah, the, the whole like British range by Legosan is fantastic. Highly recommend. Pleasure to work with. Um, can't wait to block it. I'm just dying to block it and let everything puff up, be beautiful and um, meld together and have the color work relax. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be great. I'm so excited. So yeah, so that's been one of my main whips as of late. Um, other whips. Okay. Oh, I left one over there, but let's talk quickly. I've got a, a new sock on, on the needles. I am going away for four days to find some winter sun next week. So I've going to have two projects. One I've cast on, which is a new sock. And I'm just going to talk about it super briefly because I love socks. I spoke about the, in the roundup, I spoke about socks and what I like about socks. I like util utilitarian socks. I wear my socks. I love wearing hand-knitted socks. So I cast on using... Um, Garth Nor Organics Pentland, which I have two pairs of socks in Pentland yarn, one of which has a hole I need to mend, and then the other one which is held up fine, and then I've also used their Snowdonia sock base, which is wonderful. Um, Pentland I don't think is designed as a sock yarn, but it's quite a toothy yarn, and I found it's wonderful for socks in my experience from the ones I've made. Um, so yeah, four ply, they come in 50 gram balls and this is Organic Ram Romney Lambswool. And this is in the color Atlantic. Uh, I've just got a toe done and a little bit of the foot. This is a nice marl. Garthner does amazing marled yarns. And then it's just stocking it on the back. And I have lost four stitches, three stitches. Yeah, stitches be flying. 
they're back. So technically this is the DRK everyday sock pattern that I'm gonna do. I love a sock like this to wear and I also love it as a pattern that I can use for travel just to like pull out as and when they're so small and portable and easy to, to knit on. Um, so yes, this is the DRK everyday sock pattern which I've knit before multiple times. No, once I've knit the bare paw which is kind of similar as the DK weight version. But yeah, so I'm making this version in Andrea Maori, she's the designer. In her version of it, she does ribbing the whole way around the foot, but I'm only doing it all across the top of the foot because I found that, especially because I use non-superwash wool for my socks, that the ribbing on the foot kind of felts and stretches out anyway. So I feel like it's going to last longer and be stronger if I just do a like stockinette on the foot and uh, the bottom of the foot and the top of the foot, I'm doing the ribbing and then on the ankle and up the leg, I will do ribbing the whole way around. So that's what I'm working with right now. I've just started it the other day. It makes me f forget how much I love knitting socks. Um, so yeah, I love this yarn. I love that it's like toothy and wooly and, and so nice. And so, yes, 2.5 millimeter needles. I'm making the second, the, wait now, is that the right? Not the biggest, the one below that. Second to largest size in this, which I believe is like 68 stitches around. And then, yeah, love it, simple. Don't wanna to spend too much time on it, but yeah, I love this sock. I love this sock pattern, I love this color. I love marls in a sock. I love to wear them with my Birkenstock clogs. So yes, socks, love it. Super happy with that. And it will be one of my main travel projects because um, it's a warm climate. So just a little sock is nice and easy to work on. So that's another whip. Okay, next whip. Let's talk about it. This is my next whip. It's in my giant, this is a Carhartt like workman's bag. And it has a lot of pins on it from Legerson patterns and socks. One of them from Stephen and Penelope. This is currently holding my kind of project of the year of 2024. And I cast this on pretty soon into January. And the way I'm obsessed with this project, with this pattern, with the yarn is, I can't tell you enough. Okay, so let me start by actually pulling up and out to show you what I have so far. <laughs> Let's do this one. So here we go. Da, 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 da. So this is my Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. Very good friend, wonderful podcaster, amazing human being, one of my favorite knitting people in the entire world. And I am obsessed with this blanket. I'm obsessed with this pattern. I love it so much. Okay, I need to gather myself. So I, one of my gentle goals of the year, using up my stash. We always want to use up our stash, but I wanted to use up my scraps. I wanted to use up my leftovers and things like that. And making a blanket was something I've never done solo. I've been part of making blankets, but I've never made one for myself, uh, for our home. And this year was the year I was like, I'm just going to go for it. Let's see how we get on. Now, so I got Laura's pattern, looked it up. She offers so many different sizes of blankets. And you can see that these blankets are made with little individual squares in garter stitch. And you build from one square and then you kind of build on a diagonal out. It's epic, it's amazing. Here's the back, which I'm weaving as I go. So don't you worry, these are all I think there's a couple that aren't, but most of these are woven in. So don't worry, don't cry for me. I am weaving as much as I can as I go. But yes, so she explains in the pattern, like kind of different sizes that you can make, like kind of a lap blanket, baby blanket, like a throw blanket, larger blanket. And so I thought to myself, okay, let's be realistic about this. You know, I'm not going to work on a blanket by itself, you know, as my main project. I love making sweaters as kind of these big main projects. And so I thought, what's like a good strategy? So my strategy so far, 
There are 52 weeks in the year and my goal is to make two squares per week for most of the year. So I want to do a hundred squares blanket. So that way I have to do approximately two squares per week for the entire year to finish the blanket. I am on track, I think, how many do we have now? Four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're at 13. We're on week five or six of the year. So I'm gonna do one more square before the end of this, week, this weekend. And then at the moment, I'm trying to kind of like be a little bit ahead so that if I do need to take a week off, I can take a week off. And so I'm just working away. And all of these, predominantly these are all scraps, or I did throw in a few of like those kind of fingering weight traveling travel skeins that I pick up when I travel. Just one that you kind of aren't really sure what to, project to use it for. I've thrown, I've wound them up and I've thrown it in this big basket and I'm pulling out things. You might recognize some things. So what could you recognize? This color is from my Velicor. These, this was some socks from Mondeem. A lot of these are socks. And this was a travel skein that I picked up in um, Minneapolis from Stephen B. Uh, this blue, it was a mini skein from the Le Garçon La Bien Aimé box. What else is nice in here? This is from Woolbath in Bath. And yeah, this actually, this one is from my Daybreak shawl, which was the second shawl that I ever make. That one that was on my needles. It was a whip for 10 years. That's that one. That's the blue. It was blue and brown and that's the blue. So I'm having so much fun making this. It's all garter stitch, so it's super relaxing, super enjoyable. So it's like garter stitch and um, German short rows and just picking up stitches. What I really do like about it as well is that you build the blocks on one by one. So you can see there's no needles on this at the moment. You just do it, you, the only time you have your needles in are when you're doing that square. So you don't have to have like a giant long needle. You just need one in, enough to do one square at a time. So I've been really, really enjoying that. The good thing is, is that I tend to wear a lot of blue and gray. So a lot of my scraps are blue and gray. So it's been really nice to be able to pull blues and grays and everything's kind of coordinating really, really nicely. And you're like, Jonathan, what's that main color? What's that fabulous main color? Well, he got cones, y'all. He got cones, yes. If I'm the only knitting podcaster that you watch, maybe I am, thank you so much for choosing only me. But if you watched Inga from Knitting Traditions and Rebecca from Crea Bea, they are big proponents of a cone, I think. And so I went out and got myself, I mean, a lot of podcasters are. I went out and got myself a couple of cones from Woolly Knit. They usually come with this band on them. So I got two cones, it's on the inside. What's it called? Do, 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 do. Morning Frost. So I got two cones of Morning Frost and I hold, I hold these together because it's a DK weight pattern. Most of the squares I've done so far have been um, fingering weight held double. Or you could also marl two fingering weight pieces together. The pattern's written so well, it really does encourage you to do that and explore. And that's why it's called a sweet shop blanket because you can pick and choose like you are in a sweet shop. It's just, Laura, you're a genius. Anyway, so I'm holding this double and this will be the main color. I got two skeins, so this is like a kilogram of yarn. I don't know if this will be enough. This might only get me through half the blanket. We'll see how we get on, but um, yes. So that's those, this, that's the main color, which is kind of like a nice cool gray color, which is perfect to go with a lot of the blues that I tend to knit with. And I'll give you a peek into the chaos that is the box. So this is inside and um, yeah, literally just um, pulling out whatever color I think will look nicely, look nice next to it and, and just knitting away. And it's kind of become my like, before I go to bed um, project. It's like the one I sit in bed and I make a square and I just relax and chill out. And I've, um, the square you do the most is the one in the middle. So kind of this one that goes in here. And I know that pattern off by heart by now. I'm only like 13 squares in and I don't need the pattern anymore. I can just whiz away. I'm not being too precious about it if I'm Shortest stitch here, I'll just, you know, 
do a bit of jiggery pokery, as they say, and fix it so that it all works out. But I think it just looks so beautiful and so epic. It's already kind of like a nice lap size now, but I want it, I want it, I want it to be in the background on this bed by the end of this year. So that's the plan. I'm enjoying it so much. I um, highly, highly recommend. I have, you know, this full basket here and I'm just pretty sure I'll get through all of it. And what an achievement that will be to kind of smash through a bunch of scraps and have something totally beautiful, totally original and full of memories, full of memories of all the fantastic projects I've made and my journey as a knitter. And that's, that's what it means to me. Um, so yeah, so happy with this, so excited. Enjoying using Woolly Knit for the first time. This, um, these cones, let me say, you know your boy loves a woolly yarn. He loves it non-superwash. He loves it rustic. This is the sheepiest smelling yarn I've ever had. And I am very glad that my partner has not commented on it just yet. He hasn't mentioned. So he's a good one. He's a keeper because he hasn't mentioned how woolly, even I'm a bit like, oh, she's a bit woolly. Um, it is called woolly knit. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, so this is epic. This project is epic. I am going to do 100 squares and I am 13% complete of this project. So wish me luck, you guys. If you are so inclined, get yourself an epic main color, you know, do what you need to do. Get yourself a cone. Love it and just blast away. It's, it's just been so much fun. I've really, really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see how it ends up. And I'm also giving myself the grace of an entire year to get it done. Do you know what I mean? Like if I can do two squares, you know, I've got a little in my like knitting journal, I'm just marking off each week, getting through it, having fun, and then, you know, putting it down. And the nice thing about it is that like, because I'm doing that sweet shop thing where I'm pulling all these scraps, I'm sitting there going, okay, what color excites me? What makes me happy? Let's do that one. And then you sit there and you just whiz through and in half an hour, 40 minutes, you've done your square. It's wonderful. Highly recommend. If you've never want tackled a blanket pattern, this is one that I'm, I'm so enthused by it. So I, I will shut up now because about this blanket because I have said enough. What I will say is for this podcast, I'm not going to show it that often every episode that would get quite boring. So I'll show it off maybe every quarter. So let's, this is our Q1 check-in. So let's maybe check in in Q2 and see where we get. So what would we, maybe in April, end of April, we'll check in and see how the blanket is getting on. Um, I am very concerned that when it's at a large size that it will have to be resting upon me. We will be in the dead of summer, but that's for future Jonathan to worry about. That's your problem. So yes, Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. Highly recommend, give it a go if you're so inclined. It's fantastic. And to wrap up, I wanna talk about two little projects and one little plan. So the plan is hide and hammer bag. I, for my birthday, which is the end of December, I got taken for brunch, which is wonderful. And obviously we went to Loop and did some yarn shopping. Cause what else, what else is there to do on your birthday but treat yourself to a new skein of something. So I mentioned that trip that I'm going on quite soon and I've got my sock project and my other project that I want to bring, which is small. The flight is four hours, so it's a pretty long flight. All I think when I'm on a flight is like four hour flight. So that means eight hours of uninterrupted knitting time. Like what, what could I get done in that time that would really, really bring me joy. And so for my birthday, we went to Loop. I got two skeins of yarn. And so I'm going to make, they're all balled up. I'm going to make another shift cowl. I feel like I made a cowl the last two years. So this is my 2024 shift cowl. Um, but I just wanted to show you the colors I got. This is spin cycle dyed in the wool. And so the three colors I got are, I'm not sure which one is which. I do know this on the bottom here. This is Venus and Furs, which is the Loop exclusive colorway. And then on the top, there's Wololo and the Saddest Place. I think this is Wololo and this is the Saddest Place, but I might be wrong. Um, but these are the three colors. So this is the other project that I want to um, work on on my trip. Uh, again, it's just a cowl pattern. So it means it'll be like portable, small. Um, it's a warm place we're going to. So 
um, it'll be fine to like knit with this. But I wanted to just show them in their epicness, these three colors. I am so happy with these three. It's kind of like jewel tones, which are such a vibe and I'm so happy with them. So that is going to be, I wanted to show you this stage because if I have all that in uninterrupted knitting time, it might be finished by the next episode. So I did want to kind of show you now that it's a plan and that will be being cast on very soon. I feel like sometimes I don't want to be like, surprise, it's finished. Like I want to kind of show you that I was thinking about it and that it's kind of a project that's been percolating. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on is a couple of languishing whips. Obviously wrapping up last year, I thought about like what's still on my needles. And this was something that I was like, okay, we need to get that done. Um, I did finish that sock. <laughs> I did do the Kitchener stitch and I just need to block it now. All the ends are woven in. I need to block it now and wear it. But I did do that sock. And I thought about some languishing whips that have been cast on last year, maybe even the year before, and I need to finish. And so I wanted to just pull them out quickly and show you. This one I've been working on last night and today, and I'm so close, and I just wanted to show you super brief that I haven't forgotten about it, and I do want to get it done. So maybe this is my accountability showing through. But this is my Satellite Shawl by Andrea Mowry. If those of you who've been here for a while can remember it, look how much I have done. Like, why have I stopped? I don't know. And this is the wrong side. And this is knit out of Big Little Yarn Co. Uh, Big Little Yarn Co. It, this is the Peruvian fingering weight yarn. And these colorways. <sighs> I do know that this colorway, the this one here, which matches the painting <laughs> behind me really, really well, is hereditary. Um, I can't remember the other colorways, the stripes. They will be on the screen if I remember them. But yeah, this is a satellite shawl. I have like one, two, three, I have four more sections. So basically I have to do this short row section here, then a, a, a brioche section, short uh, garter and short row. So I have four more sections and then I'm done. And this is nearly finished and it's beautiful and it's so soft. And I'm like, I can't have these whips languishing sitting in bags. I was kind of thinking, I was like, oh, I need another hide and hammer bag because the other ones are all full. I was like, well, you could just finish the projects and then you get the bag back. Anyway, so yes. Another thing is that like what I was talking about, I couldn't do my jumper in darkness and when there wasn't daylight. So I'm like, well, why don't I work on this, you know, while I, while I have the time. So yes, I'm getting back on the board, back on the board, back on board with this. And there's other like shawl patterns that I want to cast on and other things that I'm like, I, I want to have clear needles. So this is something that I want to get done. I'm so close, like it just like a week or two of work on that and it's finished. The other one, hopefully I can just pull out one rather than the whole shebang. Okay, here we go. Yes. So I wanted to pull this out. I've mentioned this before. What's wrong with me? My Funfetti. This is my Funfetti by uh, Sylvia Watts Cherry, which was in a older issue of Lina magazine. I have, I think I mentioned this in the previous episode, but I haven't finished it. But I have, this is the back. I have the front done and one sleeve done and most of the back done. Again, two weeks maybe, two or three weeks work and I could have a whole finished finished sweater. So um, yeah, these are these are languishing, but I've pulled them out. I've reorganized them. For this one, I just need to figure out where I am in the pattern. I'm pretty sure I know where I am. This one, this, this, this is the front to the back, and I'm just about to start like decreasing. That's all I have left for this. And then on the sleeve, I just have the sleeve cap and then the second sleeve to do. So it needs to get finished. It absolutely needs to get finished because I love these colors. Look at them, so epic. So yes, that's the Funfetti by Sylvia Watts Cherry, and I am determined to get them done. Um, you know, I'll be finished the sweater pretty soon. I do want to do a very mindless, simple, large gauge project, which I will speak about in the next episode. So once I finish the Nightfall, that's what I want to do. Um, it is a cardigan pattern, so I want to get that, do that next as a kind of palette cleanser, but then I'm jumping right back, right back on that Funfetti, getting that done. It's a really cool kind of 70s vibe. Like, I'm so into it. I have been into it. That's why I cast it on and knit, you know, two thirds of the whole thing before 
putting it down. So yes, want to get that done. And that way I'm kind of will be like three sweaters into 2024 before the end of Feb, which would be amazing. Um, but again, not pressuring myself, taking my time, enjoying. But I do want to get those whips done. Clearing off your needles, there's like no better feeling than having completely clear needles and then just looking at your stash and like, okay, cool, what's next? What's epic? What's gonna feel good? So yes, I'm feeling really, really good. Really, really excited about getting all these things finished, sharing them with you and just being really excited for like the new bits that are being added to my wardrobe. So thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for those of you who watched the previous episode. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't, please go back and have a look at the 2023 roundup. I worked really, really hard on that video. Um, you know, those people you see who do every photo that you see, every video that you see that's like dropped in, like you have to think somebody had to set up the camera do all of that, edit all that stuff in. All that stuff takes time. So anybody who watched, who liked, who commented, thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Um, we work really, really hard on these videos. So um, any love you can give is really, really appreciated. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope your 2024 has been off to a great start and you're full of energy and good vibes for your knitting. I certainly am. I'm so excited about this year. So yeah, let me know what you've been working on as always, how I've been keeping you company. I hope you've been doing well. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We're close to a rounder number now, whatever, who cares? But yeah, subscribing would be great. And then yeah, leave me a comment what you've been getting on with here and yeah thank you so much for being part of this community it means a lot to me thank you for being part of my day <laughs> and i will see you very soon with lots of updates and lots of news and lots of people that i've seen at the unravel festival so yes lots to look forward to thank you so so much from the bottom of my heart take care of yourself be well bye